Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, joined today by Steve Merrill. We're talking top three tips to winning, not only long term, but in a couple of different sports. Steve Merrill, welcome in. It's so much more than picking winners. Give me your top three tips to winning long term. Yeah, Kelly, I'm going to tell you the three most important aspects to being a long term winning sports investor or better, whatever term you want to use. And picking winners is not even one of the top three. I'll make it number four. That'll be my sleeper alert bonus pick at the end will be picking winners more winners than losers but look seriously it's not the most important factor it's not even one of the top three and the most important factor and it's not even debatable and i'm going to be an extreme reason why the number one factor is money management and let's take a real extreme example to show why let's say you go 99 percent winners you go 99 and one against the point spread you bet 100 percent of your bankroll every time you still go broke that one loss is going to break you and you won't be alive to get all the other 99 winners I know that's an extreme example, but it shows why money management trumps everything else. You also could double and triple up after a loss and catch the one winner and go one and three and still make money. I would not do that. Google Martindale. You will find out why that is a terrible betting strategy. But seriously, money management is the key to winning long term. And it doesn't have to be difficult. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Flat bet. Same amount on every single game. That's the way I do it at wagertalk.com. That's the way I've done it for the past 30 years as a full-time professional. That's how I recommend my clients do it. And we take it a little bit further. We use a percentage of bankroll. I recommend maybe 3 to 4% on an average play. Now, I'm a low-volume guy. I average two to three best bets a night for my clients. Selectivity works for me. So I have no problem recommending 4% plays on a nightly basis. But you still have to be careful. If it's a big Saturday in college football or college basketball or it's the NFL Super Bowl with all the props, I would still not overextend your bankroll beyond maybe, say, 20% in one day. So at most, I usually have maybe five plays on a Saturday in college football or basketball, and that gets us up to that 20% risk tolerance. And look, I don't expect to go 0-5. It rarely happens, but it occasionally does happen. We have a lot more 5-0 and days, by the way. But you have to have that downside risk in sight. So money management is the key, and that was what separates winners from losers long-term. I am the same as you, Mr. Merrill. I prefer to flat bet as well. It is just a lot better for me. Every once in a while, I like a play more than others, but for the most part, 3% is the name of the game. Next up, and this is a topic that we say all the time. You got to shop around, but more importantly, where should you be shopping? Yeah, Kelly, I want to say I've been doing this a long time, but I've been doing it for almost 30 years, as I mentioned. And when I started in the 90s, I did a money management article. When I first was on the internet, late 90s, after I'd been in business for a few years, finally had a website. It was a money management article. It also it, it appeared in numerous sports betting guides back in the 90s. Uh, young kids watching this might not even know what a magazine or a betting guide was, but it was also in print. And I put that it was very important to shop for lines. And I said, it's amazing to me that people will shop around to get a better price on a bicycle or a VCR. I've had to update that article since the 90s. But it's, seriously, I mean, if you go to the store, even the grocery store, people shop around for like a 50 cent difference on milk, but they won't even shop around for a better line when they have hundreds, if not thousands of dollars bet on a game. And those half points normally don't matter. Maybe only 4% of the time do they matter. 96% of the time, it's not gonna matter if you get that extra half point, but it adds up. Even if you're playing only two to three games a day, that's hundreds of games over the course of the year, thousands over a couple of years, those half points matter. And every time you get a push instead of a win or a loss instead of a push makes a tremendous difference. And it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Picking winners is not the most important thing. In fact, I could flip a coin, and if I could get an extra half point to a point on every selection every day, I would hit 54 55% of the blind just by flipping a coin. So once again, shopping for lines is so important. And you want to have a different type of sports book. You don't want to have the same... Having five sports books is great, but if they all have the same number 99% of the time, it defeats the purpose. You want some sharps, you want some square books. And what I mean by that, you want books that get more public action. Maybe the favorites are jacked up higher. You want sharper books in which the underdogs are a little lower. So you can shop around and get a different number whenever possible. And speaking of more books, you also get more sign-up bonuses. Now, the bonuses in the U.S. aren't what they were a couple of years ago. Um, they've really cut down because a lot of these states aren't allowing the books to write off the bonuses, uh, tax reasons, et cetera. But you can still get several hundred dollars when you sign up. So why have one account? Get five accounts. Get a couple thousand dollars in your bankroll instantly by having the ability to shop around and win more games. Steve, you brought up an article you wrote. I wrote an article in uh, 2013 in the New York Times about the rise of sports gambling and where men and women are a little different. And that comes from an emotional side. I know that sounds weird to say, 
but women do not chase as much as men. Women do not get as mad as men when they lose. I might be the lone exception there, but all jokes aside, let's talk about controlling your emotions when it comes to sports gambling. Yeah, and by the way, Kelly, happy National Women's Month or whatever the hell it is here in March. So I just wanted to throw that out to you. But no, it's an Thanks, excellent Steve. point. And I do a lot of analogies, as you know, between the financial markets and the sports betting market. And probably we should do another video of that down the road. We will do another video on that because that's a whole separate topic. But there's been studies that women do much better in the financial markets than men because they don't overtrade. Uh, they don't chase losses like you're saying. Another study shows that some of the worst investors in the financial markets are doctors, like high skilled professionals. I always found that fascinating. One of the reasons is because they think they know everything and they are pretty damn smart, but sometimes you're too damn smart for yourself, right? A little bit of knowledge is very dangerous. And I think that's another reason a lot of people that are sports fans do not make good sports betters. But yeah, emotional control, just lifestyle choice in general is so important. And the, some of the best clients I've had over the past 30 years have been women because they treat this as a serious investment. They don't live and die by every possession, by every box score. They don't even watch a lot of the games. And I highly recommend considering that. And I've talked a lot about that on Wager Talk TV the last couple of years. I watch less games live now than I ever have over the past 30 years. And it sure has not hurt my results. In fact, my numbers have been better than ever since I joined Wager Talk three years ago, number one in several categories, multiple sports. The selectivity works for me and taking a forest from the trees perspective works for me as well. And first of all, let's put this in perspective. It is impossible to watch all 362 college basketball teams. We're gonna talk about how to win in college basketball betting here in a little bit. It's impossible to do that. So you need to have some kind of system where you can recap the games efficiently. I can recap a game within five minutes, read the recap, look at the box score, dig into the numbers, and I don't need to waste two hours watching that game on TV. And also, I don't enjoy the emotional roller coaster. With that said, I think more people than not, 70 to 80% of sports bettors probably bet just because they want the emotional rush. Uh, that's why people gamble in general. So you have to be honest with yourself. Are you treating this as an investment or as a form of recreation? Both are perfectly fine. I have no problem with either one of them, but just be honest with yourself. If it's recreation, you want to watch the games, get some enjoyment, maybe lose a little over the course of the season, that's perfectly fine. This is a form of investment for me, and I hope my clients have the same outlook. Um, but once again, balance in life is very important and it's very important as well when it comes to sports betting. Uh, Steve, you just nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. Having a work-life balance is important and having a sports-life balance is also yeah. important. Last night, saw that Michigan State wasn't going to cover, didn't even stay up for the Iowa State game, just turned it off and went to bed. Now, be it I woke up at 3 a.m. and had to check the score because my brain was not going to allow me to not do that. But sometimes it's better not to watch because I would have went to bed very mad at both of those teams. Steve, you want to join on with him? He's one of the best, as he just mentioned, top in almost every single category at Wager Talk. Right now you can get 25% off one of his daily packages or an all access pass up to one full year using coupon code TIPS25. That is TIPS25, one per user. So make sure you use it wisely.